Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the very important questions from group 13 elements, which is P block elements. So, we are going to focus on some reasoning based questions in this video, which will help you in your preparation for mains, need, CBSE or IEC board examinations. Let's get started without any more delay. Since we are talking about group 13 elements, first of all, I would like to show you some topics which are very much important from group 13 elements. These are the topics from where the questions have appeared multiple times in various examinations. Let's take a look at the topic list. The first one is stability order. The questions related to stability order are so very common, like uh, which among the following four compounds is highly thermally stable or observe the following elements and write the stability order, write the increasing order of the stability or identify the decreasing order of the stability kind of questions. So this kind of questions are quite commonly framed from group 13 elements and of course from other group elements also. And the second important topic is Lewis acidic strength, comparing a given set of molecules in terms of their Lewis acidic strength. And similarly, comparing the given set of molecules in terms of Lewis basic strength is also an important point from where you can expect the questions. And then is reducing power and oxidizing power comparison. And after that, questions in, a, in and around inert pair effect are also important. So there are a few consequences of inert pair effect, like inert pair, inert pair effect is going to affect the oxidation state, thereby affect the stability, etc, etc. So the questions around inert pair effect are also predominantly observed. And the next one is basic nature of hydroxides, which among the given hydroxides is most basic kind of questions. Followed by the trends of atomic radius, ionization energy kind of periodic trends. You need to know the increasing order of atomic radius and increasing order of ionization energy, electron gain enthalpy, etc. type of periodic trends of group 13 and also other group elements in P block. So these are the topics that you need to keep focus on. So what shall we do in this video is let us pick up at least one example for each of these topics and let us also discuss the logics behind how to achieve the answers for those questions. Let's jump into the first topic which is stability how to deal the questions which are related to stability. So basically when you're talking about stability of any given molecule, there are two perspectives that you can focus on. The first one is the chemical bonding perspective if you are talking about the molecules. If you're talking about a complete molecule which is neutral, which doesn't have any positive or negative charge, look at the chemical bonding perspective of that molecule. And if you're talking about the ions, like ions with either cationic charge or anionic charge, try to impose the concept of inert pair effect and try to understand how stable the ions are with respect to that inert pair effect and oxidation state that they are existing in. For understanding this better, let us take two examples, one for each of these styles. The very first one, take a look at the molecules that I'm going to list out now. There are three molecules that we are observing and the first one is NF3 nitrogen trifluoride the second one is ncl3 nitrogen trichloride and the third one is nbr3 so out of these three molecules that you see here which is most stable what is the stability order of these three molecules that you see here and how do we deal with this what kind of molecules are they they are the molecules which do not have any charge either cationic or anionic charge is absent so for this kind of molecules you can quickly take a look at the chemical bonding that they possess as in apply the concepts of valence bond theory according to valence bond theory the more is the extent of overlapping between the atomic orbitals of the central atom and the adjacent atoms the more stronger the bond is so in case of nf3 nitrogen's second shell is overlapping with the second shell of fluorine so we would say it is 2 to 2 overlapping with respect to the shell level but in case you want to compare it at subshell level you can also call it as 2p subshell of nitrogen is overlapping with 2p subshell of fluorine so it is 2p 2p overlapping in case of nf3 and when you apply the similar concept to ncl3 and check that out in case of ncl3 the second shell of nitrogen is overlapping with the third shell of chlorine which is 2p to 3p overlapping here in case of nbr3 it is 2 to 4 overlapping 
and according to VBT, if the shells that are overlapping are closer to the nucleus, the extent of overlapping is better and if the extent of overlapping is better, you're going to have a strong chemical bond. So because in case of NF3, it is 2 to 2 overlapping in which the shells of nitrogen and fluorine compared to the second and third molecule are closer to the nucleus, they make a stronger bond and that's why NF3 is the most stable molecule out of the three molecules that you see in this series and the second priority goes to ncl3 due to obvious reasons of vbt you're having the third shell of chlorine involving in overlapping here which is better closer to nucleus than the top fourth shell of bromine so this way you can compare the stability and most commonly the questions which are related to the stability of the molecules are asked in terms of thermal stability rather than asking it as stability order of the given set of molecules they would ask you the thermal stability of the given set of molecules understand in both the cases you are applying the same concept from vbt and now quickly moving on to the second model of stability based questions which can be answered with the help of inert pair effect so for this also let us consider one example we have two species over here one is tl plus tallium plus one and the second one is tl plus three tallium in plus three state so out of the two species that you see which is more stable is it the first one or the second one just give a guess according to inert pair effect give a guess and let me know the answer in the comments and now if you already have answered it let me clarify what the right answer is over here between TL plus 1 and TL plus 3, TL plus 1 is more stable and this can be understood with the help of inert pair effect. So basically inert pair effect talks about the reluctance of NS2 electrons from being lost from the outermost shell of the P block elements and this is predominantly observed in the last two elements of P block groups like in group 13 the last two elements and tallium is one of those last two elements by the way the last two elements would be exhibiting this reluctance to lose their ns2 electrons due to increased nuclear charge and that happens due to the poor shielding effect of the inner d orbitals but anyway ns2 electrons would love to stay back in the molecule stay back in the atom rather than being lost due to which the oxidation state of the atoms or oxidation state of the species in case of last two elements of p block will reduce by two units if you are talking about group 13 the maximum oxidation state is plus three but the last two elements would love to exist in plus one oxidation state which is two points lesser than actual in case of group 14 the actual oxidation state is plus four but the last two elements would love to exist in plus two oxidation state so as you move down the tendency of the species to exist in its original maximum oxidation state reduces by two points and that's due to inert pair effect so whenever you are supposed to compare the stability of cations or anions in case of p block apply the concept of inert pair effect observe the position of those elements in the group in the particular group 13 or 14 or whatever if you are talking about the element which is towards the end of the group understand it is stable in its lower oxidation state and if it is something which is at the top of the group, understand it is stable at its higher oxidation state. To get this straight, let me take all the elements from group 13. If I'm talking about boron family, boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, and tellium is the list of elements. And the maximum oxidation state is plus 3 for group 13 elements. And now if I ask you, tell me the order of stability of this all ion in their plus 3 oxidation state, you must say out of all of them, boron is most stable in plus 3 while tellium is least stable in plus 3. Because tellium and indium come towards the end of the group and as you travel down the group, the inert pair effect increases as a result of which the reluctance to lose NS2 electrons will also increase and hence this plus 3 oxidation state will be less stable okay i hope these points are clear and let us move on to the next point where we are going to talk about lewis acidic strength but in case you still have some doubts about what we spoke in the last page please make sure you put down your doubts in the comment section below so what is lewis acidic strength basically what is meant by lewis acid lewis acid is a substance which have capacity to accept electrons and any substance that can accept electrons can be considered as Lewis acid. 
So the questions related to identifying Lewis acid, comparing Lewis acidic strength among the given molecules are quite common from group 13 and also from a few other groups of P block like group 14 se bhi aise questions aa sakte hai. So what are we going to do is we are going to take a set of examples first of all and after that we are going to understand how to compare Lewis acidic strength and answer the set of examples that we take alright. So the examples include BX3, ALX3, GAX3 and INX3. So I'm basically talking about the trihalides of group 13 that is trihalide of boron, aluminium, gallium and indium. Out of the four molecules that you see here which acts as the best Lewis acid and how do we tackle with this question. Lewis acid is a substance which can attract electrons or which can accept electrons. That's fair enough. But then to compare Lewis acidic strength, you need to look at the ease at which the central atom takes up the electrons. Any species that can pick up the electrons readily or easily is considered as good Lewis acid. So over here out of the four options, you need to pick up the option which is consisting of or which is exhibiting capacity to accept the electrons readily. So observe the central atoms here, boron, aluminium, gallium and indium. Out of these four atoms, which can take up the electrons easily? What would be your answer? And how do we compare this? That can be understood easily by observing which of these four atoms is desperate for electrons. Which of these four atoms have got capacity to accommodate electrons so very easily? To understand this better, what can we do is, I'll give you a logic over here. The size of the central atom in such questions is inversely proportional to the lowest acidic strength. But why is that? If the central atom that you're talking about is something which is having smaller size, then what happens? Then it's going to have comparatively better nuclear charge. Because of this better nuclear charge, what happens is its capacity to take up the electrons or its capacity to attract the electrons will be higher. So over here, boron because of its smaller size and high nuclear charge can readily accept electrons in comparison to aluminium, gallium and indium and that's why BX3 acts as a better Lewis acid and as you go down the group due to increase in the number of shells, of course the atomic radius is increasing and nuclear charge is decreasing and that results in reduction in the Lewis acidic strength as well and remember in case you're talking about Lewis basic strength the story is gonna be opposite let's now quickly get into the third topic of the day which is Lewis basic strength how do we compare Lewis basic strength but what exactly is Lewis base Lewis base is a substance which have capacity to donate a pair of electrons and the species which can readily do that is considered as a good Lewis base. Let's take a set of examples even here. Let us take uh, NF3 as first example, NCL3 as second example, NBR3 and finally NI3. So out of the four examples that you have here, which can act as the best Lewis base? As I already told you, the substance which can readily donate its lone pair of electrons is a good Lewis base. So you give it a try. This is the first, second, third and fourth molecule. You try attempting this and you'll be ready with your answer. And if you're ready with your answer, now listen to my explanation for this question. So out of these four molecules, the central atom is same. So in every case, the central atom is going to have a lone pair of electrons for sure. But then the point is, in which case is the central atom having tendency to really donate its lone pair of electrons? To understand that, you need to look at the adjacent atoms. It's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. We know that fluorine is very well electronegative. And in NF3, due to electronegativity of fluorine, what happens is, fluorine would be attracting the bond pair of electrons towards itself. So this is the direction of the dipole moment. And as a result of this, the lone pair of nitrogen that you see here are also slightly attracted towards fluorine. So the lone pair of electrons in case of nitrogen are not readily available. They're not freely available. 
But when you observe Ni3, iodine comparatively is less electronegative as a result of which the pull of iodine or the pull of this lone pair of electrons towards iodine comparatively is lesser than that of NF3, which makes Ni3, which makes the lone pair of electrons in Ni3 readily available for the purpose of donation. So in nitrogen, in case of Ni3, can donate the lone pair of electrons easily due to less electronegativity of the iodine atoms. And hence, Ni3 is a better Lewis base than NBr3, NCl3 and NF3. So this is how we can compare the Lewis basic strength. So in this video, we were just looking at the topics that we would have to focus on from group 13 elements. And out of these topics, we just have taken examples to understand stability order better. Lewis acidic and Lewis basic strength and the rest of the topics we'll be talking about in the second part of this video. I hope you have understood the topics that we discussed today. In case of any doubts, please let me know in the comments. I'll see you in one other video. Until then, bye from my side.